spending some time this afternoon trying to to rework some of this because of the announcements that were made yesterday in the provincial budget. So the things that are in red here are some of the things that have changed as a result of the budget yesterday. Uh, implementation of full day kindergarten. We do have a commitment of some money in that area. Uh, teacher salary lift in the coming year of 2%, which is estimated to cost about close to $44 million. There's purported to be some money in the system uh, as we get there. But then there's a whole host of other things that are coming up which are, have not been mentioned, let alone addressed, in the budgetary situation. The AFG, this is very interesting. This is, uh, if you read the media, you'll hear that this has been restored. But the government's wording around this is very clever. Uh, the minister in his, the minister in his announcement, the legislature said that money would be provided between now and March of next year. That actually straddles two school fiscal years. So it's quite possible that the amount that's announced is not a full restoration funding, but a partial restoration. Anyway, these numbers are subject to some change. We need to drill a little deeper into what's going on with the budgets in order to pin them down. But we do face another significant shortfall as we enter the coming year. Now if you take the amounts of money that are routinely advertised as being made available to public schools, the red line on the top tracks the change in that variable over time from 2000 2001 up to what we believe will be in store in the coming fiscal year. And this is the, this is the source of this whole notion we routinely hear. We heard it again yesterday. We've got the highest level of funding ever in our schools. This amount, despite dipping or, or leveling off here, has risen steadily over this period of time. But really what you need to do to make a fair comparison here is to factor out the impact of all of these new downloaded responsibilities, the, the less than fully indexed areas of cost increase within the system. Because when you do that, you get the purple line on the bottom, which shows you what the real amount of money is that's left over to operate our public schools. If we were operating our public schools next year with the same range of programs and services that we had back here, this is the real amount of money you'd be working with. And you can see, particularly in the last two years, on the basis of funding decisions and cuts that have been made through that period, that funding is not really going up, it's going in the other direction. And the gap that is opening up between the two is what really constitutes in a measurable way, the structural funding shortfall that's facing our school system. I do the same kind of calculation here based on per pupil spending, because that's the measure that the minister tends to like to use in terms of, of uh, making the argument we've got the highest level of funding ever. You find that because of falling enrollment, this line, the top line, moves up at a little bit steeper rate, and the fall off is not quite as dramatic, but it still is there, still very perceptible. And in fact, even when looking at it on a per student level, we find that this whole argument of the highest level of funding ever really is a myth. If you take the time to properly dissect levels of expenditure and revenue, and the changes in responsibilities and lack of proper indexing, Funding is actually going down with those measures rather than going up. Lots of different impacts. Uh, this is not unique to this district or any other, but just looking at what we find around the province, school closures, the BCTF's website shows that there have been 182, 181 since 2002 with more on the way. We hear different reports from districts like Prince George and others about other, uh, other schools that are being considered for closure as districts grapple with these funding problems. Courses and programs cut in a whole host of areas. I've run out of time, so I won't go on too much longer. Staff cuts, school and week and timetable changes. These are things that are not being driven primarily by educational criteria, but are being driven by funding criteria, by funding, lack of funding, which is really, I would argue, the wrong way to structure your school timetable 
or the way in which you organize the school week. And that increased pressure to charge more money, pressure on our other areas of the budget. I conclude with the idea that two things we need. We need a funding increase, a genuine one, to, to compensate for the lack of money over the past seven to eight years and to halt further damage. And we also need an open review of funding adequacy and the funding formula, not one that's done by in a cloistered way behind closed doors, but one that has authentic public input and debate and consideration from all different stakeholders in the community at large. So fix the funding, fix the formula. There.